The four-step method to high-performance trading and the seven-step daily routine for high-performance traders are both free downloads. The four-step method for high-performance trading is about de developing the mindset and the routines to increase your competence and your ability to execute your trading edge in a live trading environment. Constant progress. Seven-step daily routine for high-performance traders is an audio program download designed to help traders bulletproof their day-to-day -day habits, discipline, and develop a winning mindset. Again, the link is in the description box below. They're free downloads. Let's get started. Just reminding traders if they're new to this channel or if this is the first time you've seen this video, if you go to this playlist, everything you need is in this playlist as it is titled. We go over the templates, the timings, the levels, the behavior of price. This will help to bulletproof your understanding of the best trade setups in the playbook. Again, these are free videos on the YouTube channel to support and enhance the skills and the development of your trading prowess within the playbook itself. Everything you need is in this playlist. Good day traders, Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Today we're gonna to be reviewing some of the best setups from the week. Uh, and we're gonna be going over and reviewing the understanding of how a parabolic setup builds. And that comes from the understanding that other time frame traders are driving these moves and how when the week begins, how I look at the market, how I sit back and wait to specific times. We'll talk about uh, specifically the New York session, but we'll also be able to address Asia and London. Uh, when you understand how the other time frame traders work and the importance and relevance of that to the high and low of the day, and then the closing price, how those three levels play the paramount role in recognizing first green day, first red day, inside day, three days of breakout traders in the markets to help identify the best instrument for a parabolic opportunity in the session that you are trading. This will help reinforce for traders uh, the basic model for trade entries. So there's a zero stress when you have the, the proper setup, three day setups, three session setups, the importance of Monday's opening range and initial balance. And then of course our trigger days. We're gonna look at specific examples of each one of these this week occurred and played out and how just sitting back and being patient and understanding how the market sets up, you can identify the best candidate on the day for an easy free cash parabolic opportunity. When we come into a new week, a new Monday, we have a closing price of the week. Now there are will be different types of ways the market may close. It may close at the highest close of the week. It may close uh, slightly lower than the highest close of the week. Uh, it may close at the lowest close of the week, or it may close somewhere in the middle. But that closing price, when the market opens up on Monday morning, Monday morning in Asia, I know it's Sunday evening in North America, and several traders have asked, uh, well, what time uh, do you use? Do you use midnight, uh, London close. I don't know where any of that comes from because I'll be honest, my charts start and end with Asia in um, Sunday evening my time, uh, which is 5 p.m. 5 p.m. my time, uh, 6 p.m. for indexes North American time. That's obviously early morning in, in the Southern Hemisphere in Asia, in Australasia. And when the market closes at 4.59 p.m. New York time, that is my closing price on my charts. Now I know there are traders who say they use midnight. I don't know, you know, uh, where that comes from. I, and it doesn't matter to me what time you use. Uh, but my charts are uh, 4 p.m., 4:59 p.m. New York time, and and when New York closes on Friday night, that's the last session. There is no midnight after that. Uh, Friday. Closing price is the closing price heading into the new week. And so when the market opens on Monday morning, that is the closing price. And when the market, sorry, that is the closing price and that is where the market opens. Now, obviously we can have a gap. The most common day for a gap usually is a Monday. Now, uh, Monday to Friday, most of the currencies roll over immediately. There can be some gaps, uh, little gaps uh, where the spreads widen. And that, that, so when you see those big spaces between little candles, and, it, and the spreads have been widened. So typically the sell and the buy will be far apart and, and diff, be different from where the closing price was. But when the market opens, we have a, a reference price 
that when the market opens on Monday morning, that's what it's based on. Unless there's been some calamity over the weekend, some world events, a flood, a war, an explosion, whatever that may be. But we have the closing price. And so right off the bat, two things to understand is what made the high and the low coming into that uh, Monday morning. So we may have, it may be Thursday's high, maybe high of the week, uh, but typically we'll be inside of Friday's range when we open. And so there's been other time frame traders come in and put a low of the day in place at some point during that day. And there's been other time frame traders come in at the high of the day at some point and, and sell that market down. So there's been buyers at the bottom and sellers at the top. And that creates our high and our low of the day. So those are our boundaries heading into the new day, into our new Monday. Now we're not going to talk about uh, weekly levels, but the same thing applies. But understanding that until we get out to these areas, the market is now using closing price as its reference point for starting the day. Now I know there's going to be different variations of how this can occur and how the market may open, etc. But for simplicity's sake, I need you to understand the importance of uh, under other time frame traders. So as the market starts trading, it's just auctioning. It's auctioning away or towards this price, that reference point for the day. So as it starts to auction, we now have established daily boundaries on that day itself, but we haven't yet activated other time frame traders. And this is what Dalton would call uh, locals or the, or the daytime trader, the day time frame trader, the short term time frame trader. And so when you hear me say that uh, to stay away from the inside, this is all Fugazi because the only real price we have so far is the actual closing price of the day. So people are looking at all these little candles and it means nothing. And, and I messaged, uh, got a message from somebody the other day. They asked me all kinds of stuff about which candle does this and the gap and everything else. And I, I said, you, know, you have to be specific in terms of what you're referencing because this is all Fugazi. Now, we're not talking about an existing trade being already in place. Uh, if we already had a trade that was existing and in place, it may be a, a downward day that, that closed down. And we may be in day two or... Uh, and a day three blow off, and we may now be working into closing price for the collapse back down because we may have had a breakout occur somewhere on the uh, upside of this this uh, this boundary uh, from the previous day. We may have breakout traders trapped, and now they're going after the money on the next day. Uh, very simple concept. This is on a Monday, perhaps. So that could be an example of where existing time frame. An existing trade is in, in order driven by other time frame traders. So this this hour, uh, I'm talking about using one hour candles here. We'll go through some examples of this. I use, I, as I put in the playbook, the one hour charts just to look at the template overall. Uh, but understanding that when the day starts, this is just a reference point. And until we get out into other time frame traders, they may come down into this level, call it a liquidity hunt or a clean out or an order block, whatever you want. And we may come back at 930, third hour for a reversal trade back to the high of the day on a Monday. And we'll look at an example of that. So if we look at the US Canadian on Monday, we have a market that when, when I come to the screen, just prior to the New York session open, we've already broken the low of the week, the low of the day. And I talked about this market being out of balance. What that means is the market broke out from the previous day's range on Free Cash Friday and it's and it closed outside. It, it broke out, it did not fail, and it stayed in breakout and closed out of balance. So balance is when it stays in auctions back and forth within a previous day's high and low, respecting both sides of other time frames. Now, when it breaks out and closes out, we now have a market that's out of balance. And I talked about this last day in the previous video. You can go back and review that when a market is out of balance. It has the potential to maybe have a large ranging day. Now, in that first part of the day, we have other time frame traders that come in at the low of that Asian session to establish a new low of the day on day one in our Monday peak formation low. Then we have again other time frames in the London session. This is an hourly chart. So when I say other time frames, 
Uh, we can have daily, four hour, weekly, every time frame involved. At the close of this candle, we have hourly traders now driving a move back down towards the low. Now, this is not me saying these are trades. This is me establishing the boundaries now, heading into our New York session on a Monday, on a day one, where I have other time frame traders now in the markets. We've broken out of a daily level. We've put a level in place in Asia. So US session high, Asia session low. London has now traded back down to the low. Now, when we come to the New York session, 9.30 New York time, we have a market that has traded higher. So we took out the hourly high that we saw on the first chart, uh, other time frame traders. We've, we've now got other time frame traders in the market at the low of the day, the low of the week, on top of closing price, the closing price of the week. The New York Open takes traders back down into the closing price level. Now remember, thesis is that we have the low of the day locked in already. We have higher highs, dumping it down in that. So we have one hour up. The second hour, New York Open trades back down. The third hour opens up and gives us our pin hammer engulfments, our little three push pattern. This is a five minute chart, one push, two push, three pushes with our thesis already in place. And that three push pattern is a parabolic coil now. And we're looking at targeting a range expansion for the measured move. Range expansion of what, Stacy? The high and the low of this box. Now, just real quickly, I will demonstrate this again. I'm receiving a lot of questions regarding how do you set your FIB tool? All it is though is set to zero, 50 and 100%, 200%, 300, 400, 500%. Uh, whatever you like. Now, we can use the high low of this range for the day. That is a larger box, and that is targeting a 100% expansion of this daily range, the opening range of Asia and London. We had a range expansion in the London session. We have other time frame traders now behind that move. Remember, we were looking at an hourly chart. What do I mean by other time frame traders? Other time frames now are driving this move. The hourly market, maybe the four hour, is behind this move. This is the thrust that's driving this trade. It's not a five minute chart. Uh, sorry, a five minute trade setup. This is being driven and set up. We'll just back this up. On the thesis that this pattern is a reversal pattern for an explosive short squeeze setup in our US session after 9.30 New York time. Now here's the problem, uh, traders get in in the first hour sometimes and there is a parabolic setup. This, uh, this, is, this is set up for a New York open market setup because we hadn't broke to the high yet. And this break to the high, the higher high, is a range expansion on the day itself. So you notice we come back, we have the Asia session starts. So we make a, a high, it goes higher. Friday's low of the day. Uh, the low may not have been in place yet as that market did. It just it just uh, crept into the low as we saw that we had pin hammers in the uh, US window open. This market now put a pin hammer in in the Asian session on our longer time frame. They went higher in London before creeping back down and making a range expansion and potentially locking in the low of the day before going vertical and and when the US window opens, that is a range expansion on the upside. So now we have peak formation low, peak formation high, consolidation, 9.30 New York open, and a third hour explosive short squeeze on Monday, day one, coming off of closing price. Now, our next example, uh, we'll look at the Japanese yen. So coming into the close of our week, if we start on Monday, we start trading, we have a market that has had other time frame traders come into the market at the high of the day in London and then pin up higher and reverse. So we know that when, when we went above the high of the week on Friday into Wednesday's high of the week, other time frames came into the market. And as that market traded lower, it came back up one more time before closing back inside of Thursday's range. So again, it broke out. Thursday was an inside day. We'll talk about that later. Uh, so we have a market that also had responsive buying at the low of the day inside of the low of the day from the previous day. So other time frame traders, as this market was moving higher, as it was moving higher towards the end of the week, 
closing range of the week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Wednesday's the midpoint range, Friday's the closing range. We have other time frames taking this market higher. The market just slightly touched back down into that range before pulling back up. And we'll just put a little level here underneath of these bodies so that traders can see that that tail now becomes easy low hanging fruit if the market sets up for a trade down into that level. So let's come back now and look at this other time frame traders. We have other time frame traders up top. So they've compressed that market into a narrow range as the week starts. So remember I talked about uh, how that market as it starts the week will start to auction back and forth. Now if we go and take a look at Monday, uh, we'll look at two sessions. We'll look at Asia and we will look at the US and London windows because we had a market that broke out. Once it breaks out outside of a previous day's boundaries, we are now in a market that is out of balance. But if we stick just to one simple concept as we have our closing range of the week, you can see the larger box that is in place heading into our new week. This is our peak formation low that's intact and our peak formation high that is intact heading into the new week. So this range on Friday is inside is inside that peak formation low, our low bear candle on Friday, meaning that that area is still uh, an area where buyers came into the market. So just if you just step back and look at the closing prices, you'll see the auction process that occurs back and forth and the market closed and opened on Monday pretty much at the same level. So pointing out that on Friday we had breakout traders triggered into the market and no daily low level has been hit. So we still have traders long in the market heading into our new week. Uh, what that means is that if they are long, their stops potentially will be at the low of the day on other time frames. So when we go to our five minute chart, we have that area where the market closed and we narrowed down into a consolidation. So we had expansion, then contraction heading into the close. We have our closing price. And if you're trading Asia, so traders have asked me to um, mentioned some Asia session trades as well as the uh, London session as well. Now there was no major red news scheduled uh, for Monday morning or Sunday evening our time. Um, uh, Bank of Japan was on the calendar for uh, the next for that for Monday evening I believe. Uh, but again we have our low of the day level that I uh, see we see projected across into the new day but we also had the low of the previous day uh, that I showed from from Thursday. Now the market again the universal entry criteria we have our levels closing price we're inside of the narrow range consolidation the market breaks down uh, from closing price level inside of our EMA for an easy 25 to 35 pip uh, short squeeze actually almost depending on where traders uh, got in if they got in at closing price that's roughly the 0805 area this market traded down to 75. Uh, so again, an easy 25 pips, a parabolic 25, uh, no heat, no stress. So when I mentioned to traders, uh, these should be zero heat, zero stress. And, and if you're wrong, you should be wrong right away. Uh, that market collapses right away. If you're in on the collapse, it's still a, a good trade. You have zero heat, but you also need to recognize when to take profits. Because once this market goes out of balance, it, it pulls back and retests that low and consolidates in one, two, three, four, five bars to the downside. Once it takes out the low, that's 20, 25 minutes. You have plenty of time to think. And again, in an Asia session on a Monday morning when we're just starting our auction process, the market is just starting now to expand the range on the new day, the new week. So remember what I said, it starts here. It's just starting to auction back and forth and expand the range. But that's an easy 25 pips in Asia. Now we come to our London window. Remember we've broken outside of Friday's low of the day. We have our new high of the day, which is still trading back up into that uh, other time frame traders from Friday's sell off. Remember the last session sold off down into the close of the day. We have a lower low on the downside because we, we had a range expansion, but we know that underneath the low of the day, and that is the new low of the week now, we have other time frame traders that have been willing participants to buy underneath this level. We had 
other time frame traders when the, the new week started that were willing to continue selling at the top of this level. So we have our London open now. We're into our new, there's our high low of the day, the high low of the week. That's our opening range. The market goes vertical in the London window. Again, uh, traders are you're recognizing they might have went long at closing price, but we have one, two, three, four, five bars at the high and an engulfment at the London Open, one hour up, an engulfment for the reversal trade into other time frame traders who are now giving us a sell signal. So when we go outside of the range and other time frame traders are coming in, we may now have a larger move because the other time frames are driving that trade setup. So we have a market now that has expanded the range on the upside. That's our opening range and our initial balance. Asia and London heading into our New York window. Day one, the market breaks lower, just taps the low at the end of the London session and breaks lower at the beginning of the US window, second hour. Now I'm gonna zoom in on this. Just keep this down here so people know what we're talking about. That market reverses. This is prior to the New York Open. And the market opens inside. The New York Open is right here. I'll mark this in a second. But we make a higher high. So as we've auctioned down, we, we have a lower high made in our U.S. window. That is our new consolidation. As the session starts, we have a peak formation low made in London. That's our low of the day. There's our, there's our range now, our initial balance, and our new opening range. That's our box. They break out of the box first hour. Second hour opens and reverses and makes a higher high. New York Open makes a higher high. There's our range expansion on the upside. Range expansion on the upside, same as we just saw in the Canadian dollar. Peak formation high, peak formation low, consolidation third hour ending so 30 to 45 minutes they engulf and begin the reversal trade back into closing price level so roughly this market uh, gives traders an entry area 84 85 area low of day trading back up to closing price 08 uh, so a reasonably decent uh, opportunity with a one bar stop because we've already locked in the low this market should be moving right away in your favor so roughly 25 pips on day one uh, this is uh, the Japanese yen again the Canadian dollar offered uh, a, a better uh, range of uh, value but still a good trade we had other time frame traders behind this move and if you just take a look at this we just basically have a reverse head and shoulders at the low of the week on day one and our entry is after the New York open we let the market set up for a 930 higher high the dump and pump template our little w pattern three pushes into the low 30 to 45 minutes end of the hour the market begins its reversal for a 25 pip zero zero stress zero heat so so here's my point with this type of trade is that you're in the market there's no heat or stress on this opportunity how much size would i use on that trade it's day one it's monday i'm not expecting a whole lot uh, Canadian dollar had a larger range, um, but I'm just, you know, it's a trade. That's all that this is, but we have other time frame traders driving this move. Just point out to uh, Thursday, we had the inside day, and we had breakout traders in the market at the close of Friday on the inside day. So coming back to understanding a three-day setup or even day one, inside day, day two, day three, uh, day three completed the trade in, in our US, sorry, our London window before reversing. They only went far enough to stop out traders that may have been long on the break of the inside day. So several traders um, often are looking for that uh, whole reversal on the same day. And uh, this is just a good example of where they've come down into other time frame traders before pulling it into consolidation. And then in Asia, They've got the first mouse. If you didn't take any money off the table, so again, my my thrust for a session is when I come to the screen, I take the trade and I lock in the money. Uh, I know that some traders want to sell. I, I want to sell this because I, I think this is going to go. Um, you know, it's going to go on a range expansion in Asia on day one. Sometimes that happens, but 
Again, understand how does price behave when it gets to the level. Um, I have an expectation when Monday starts trading, as I showed on our, our first slide, is that uh, it's just starting the auction process. So being willing to be patient, take the trades. Same thing with London. They trade down to that level, goes into consolidation, lock in the money, and get off the screen. Now, this is a bit of a unique week in that uh, it almost, the yen, we'll look at a couple examples on the yen. So coming back to recognizing, as I've talked about in repeatedly in every video, Monday is day one because that's what starts the new week. We have a range expansion on the upside. Other time frame traders came into the market. So you'll recognize once we go outside of a daily level, even though we're still inside of a weekly level, other time frame traders came into the market. They came into the market in London to drive this down. Now this is um, Bank of Japan uh, release. Uh, but when this market now came back up inside, coming back to our timing window, I want to explain something with re regards to the U.S. session window. So recognizing that when other traders are trapped on the wrong side and where is the money if they're going to go back. So we had a breakout of an inside day, signal day. They came back and got the money. They, they didn't go all the way. They came up and got uh, Asia session shorts. We have a range expansion on the downside. That cleared out traders from the inside day. They've come back into traders who were long, uh, sorry, short in the London session. Now, when we have breakout traders in the market and that market reverses, in this particular example, heading into our US session, so we have Asia and then London reversal, how does price behave when we come to our session? Now, we'll look at two situations here, the London reversal, and then we'll look at the US session uh, long trade opportunity on day two, Tuesday, uh, back towards where, again, if you look at this candle, other time frame traders are in the market after a, a Bank of Japan news release. So if traders are trading on the break of this candle or even below these wicks, look where the market closes heading into our US window. Who's trapped and where is the money? So using these longer time frames and understanding once we go outside of these levels as the new week evolves and the auction process starts to create range expansions, we can now recognize not only opportunities in our session, but also signal day, the importance of the signal days, whether or not you have a valid first green day, first red day based on the weekly template, day one, day two, day three, reset day one, day two, day three, or if we have other markets setting up with different types of opportunities. So if we take a look at Tuesday, and first of all, we had a range expansion in Asia prior to the, or just after the bank release. So we have a range expansion on day two. So remember, as the week starts, if we come back to closing price, the market is just moving back and forth around closing price in this particular case. They've expanded the range on Tuesday, day two, They've blown off and cleared out the low of the week on uh, just prior to the Europe London Open. This is in Asia after the news release. So again, an opportunity after a news catalyst for a trade. So not trying to trade the news, waiting for that to uh, establish an opportunity. And this is a parabolic blow off after a news release. We get a peak formation low in place before the London session opens. London session opens at 3 a.m. Middle hour again similar to New York, and they auction back down into our peak formation low. So uh, I put the universal EMA on there just to remove analysis paralysis. If you understand the setups, this is a clear, easy, easy, just a non-subjective way to recognize, you know, there's obviously earlier entries, but for now, using this criteria, when you have a market that goes parabolic and vertical outside of the range, the EMA is going to be slower to curve around. But if you understand that the low of the day now is potentially locked in and we're auctioning back down into that low, we're out of balance. Remember, when the market opens, if we're out of balance, I'm going to put the opening candle on there, it has the potential for a large ranging day. London opens, they auction back down below that low, third hour about to start, 30 to 45 minutes, the engulfment 
Okay, so somebody wants to get in and they want to buy the very low. Okay, great. You bought the very low. Now, the only reason I'm not interested in doing that is that I'm going to be sitting there holding on to this. So how much size do I want to have shaken back and forth? I'm waiting for that market to lock in the low and begin the reversal to start adding into this market. Where is my maximum boundary that I'm going to get filled up to? If this is behaving as if price is behaving as it should. This is a five minute chart and it's a larger ascending triangle, larger ascending triangle targeting a measured move opportunity. If we just come back to using our little box criteria for a 100% expansion of that range. When we head into our US window, okay, this is an example of a first hour trade. So we're targeting, we've already had a range expansion on the upside. We showed on the hourly chart how traders are already trapped on longer time frames underneath of this level, the blue line. Okay, we have a first hour opportunity now to begin the move back up towards the high of that range and completing that range expansion, which is a 50 pip plus target. Zero heat, zero stress, coiling inside of our EMA. Remember what I said about parabolic opportunities. They coil sideways. They coil sideways in a rectangle. Okay, rectangles are geometrical structures for uh, on larger patterns for projected range expansions, but also that's that's creating the consolidation for a, a large explosive move that should not come back. 30 to 45 minutes, so 45 minutes into the hour, it's coiled inside, we're, we're at our levels, we want to get filled better than closing price, back to the high of the day and completing that range expansion on Tuesday, day two. Now this is just the Japanese yen and the Canadian dollar on both Monday, Tuesday, that have both uh, 25 on the yen on Monday, 50, 40 to 50 on the Canadian, I believe on, on, on Monday, 50 on Japanese yen on Tuesday, purely on markets that have started from the low of the week. So when I say a three session setup, Asia, London, New York, reversal. Day, day one, we still had Asia, London, New York. Three session setup. That's a three session setup. Now you can get three session setups heading into Asia, as we just saw. We get a we get a peak formation high in London, a peak formation low in the U.S. window. Heading into our Asian window, the peak formation reversal in Bank of Japan news and a parabolic blow off. Major news on the calendar. It may take another hour or so to to offer that opportunity. But there are three session setups everywhere. We have Asia, so peak formation low in the U.S. There's our low. There's our high, peak formation low, peak formation high, consolidation blows off, and we get a reversal in London. Asia, sorry, US, Asia, and London, three session setup. I'm gonna just keep walking through the yen. Um, we're gonna go through a couple of other pairs, but I, I just wanna emphasize the importance of understanding other time frames. Now, we had an opening range, and then we had a range expansion. But the closing prices were inside until Tuesday's close. Now, Tuesday's close closed outside of the daily level. Remember what I said about the beginning of the week. That's our reference point. That's our reference point for where price auctions back and forth from. Everything is timed and measured. So we get a close outside of that range, a distance away from there, but immediately the market comes back in Asia before the session opens and auctions back below that level. We have a failed breakout. And we have what Al Brooks would call an H1 candle. Uh, we have one, two, three down. So uh, think other time frames, one hour, two hours, three hours, consolidation, four, five, six hour downward candles. So we now have other time frames driving this move, four hour daily. Uh, so traders will say to me, well, I wait for my four hour trend and, and daily trend and hourly trend to all line up. I'm, I mean, if you understand what these levels mean and you understand who's driving these moves when the market opens and closes, you understand what time frames are involved without having to look at all these other charts. So we have a market now that as the Asian session is opening, we get one hour down, one hour up, that's our stop hunt, and then the continuation blow off that accelerates into the London window, session one, session two, 
And this is an example of where a market will begin to blow off in the third session before the New York Open. Why is that? Because it's accelerating into the move. It's capitulating. So we have our low of the week. We had a range expansion on the upside. Sorry, the downside and a range expansion on the upside. And we're just in a big box. They've broke out of the box. Other time frames have come into the into the picture. Remember who's potentially behind these moves. Okay. And and this is an hourly chart. So if you really want to understand time rotation, recognize that when the hour closes, this is why somebody can get in on a one-minute chart. Because they understand the timing rotation and when the, the price behaves as it should. We'll look at this in, in one moment here at the very high. We had one hour down that closed outside of the range. The hour closed down here and that began the new Europe open session reversal before the London market auction back down. Third hour trade that accelerates now vertically. So we have a market that's accelerating into the blow off. Which is why sometimes, as I say, it's the end of the London trade. It's blowing off and then New York is going to open where? Down at the low of the day. So let's take a look at the high of the day, at the close of the range, at the session. Understand that other time frames are driving these moves. Session one, session two, session three, blowing off in the direction of the trend. So at the end of the day, we have our high of the day in place so the little bar i'll just move this little candle up that's the close right here this candle right here is the close of the hour and interestingly enough we have our little three bar engulfment at the high but we have a, a market that's making a high trades higher a little bit higher and then expands the range one more time into the level where sellers came in the previous day sorry on friday so if i just project even right across the top of that wick that's sort of the middle of the range where we have other time frame traders entering into the market you can call it an order block whatever you want market's gone out of balance that's all i care about is it's broken out of out of balance and then it expanded the range one more time from the high of the asian session Remember, we've auctioned away from closing price. The closing price of the week, we're as far away from that as you can get right now. Now, I'm not trading up here, but I'm just demonstrating how does price behave when it gets there. So we have a market that pumps up on the last level, pump and dump, a, a smaller pump and dump pattern that coils sideways underneath of closing price, continues to break down. And again, if you have a thesis in place for an opportunity, a three-session setup, we have a market that offers, uh, I don't consider that a best trade candidate for Asia, but just again following the process, as we accelerate into that move, uh, if traders were looking at, this is a, a situation where the market now has coiled sideways again, we've broken down, so consider this to be, I'll just mark this for, for traders to see, uh, the US window above here, above the Asian, uh, Asian open and the US window, there's level one up to the high of the day. Level one, breaking down now, we're into our new box and we're in level two. Now this is where timing is important because I've talked about the seven to 8 a.m. offer uh, can offer opportunities sometimes if there's a setup there. We have other time frame traders already triggered into the market. Remember what I said, where is the money? We have breakout traders in the market at the end of the session, whether they broke out of the original high of the day or they traded through the uh, Asian peak formation. We have breakout traders in the market. We have we have traders long in the U.S. window on level three. Where is the money? Session one, session two, session three begins to blow off in the direction of the trend. We had major red news at 9:45, and let's take a look. The market goes out of balance again at the low of the day, the low of the week, and we have a low that gets put in place. One push, two push three pushes into the end of the first hour. Second hour opens, consolidates, gives a little pin hammer engulfment. Well, we had major red news at 9.45 a.m. That's correct. That's our higher high on the inside. Higher high on the inside is the template for the, the dump and pump. That's our break in structure on the inside 
after the market has gone out of balance. So we have a market now that's trading back down into this level. So 945 news, minimum, right? We're thinking third hour trade. 9.45, so 10 a.m., 10 a.m., auctions back down into this level, end of that hour, 30 to 45 minutes, we have our reversal in place. We want to get filled at or better than the low of the day level. So again, you can chase the candles or you can get filled and put your stop in place. Now, here's an easy thing to understand. When I've traders have said to me, um, how do you put your stop in? Where do you manage? If I'm getting filled below 50, or sorry, double zeros, we'll just mark that off because we already have our thesis in place. I want to get filled better than or at the low of the day level. I want to get a starter in there. So we've got our little hammer right here. Okay, as price is starting to come up, I'm just going to get filled. Max stop is 20 pips. It keeps me inside of this range because if that takes out the low, I'm wrong. But we've already we've already got our low of day locked in when New York session opens. News clears everything out, the lower level short at the beginning of the session, level three blow off. Then we have our little W structure for the reversal. So when I'm getting in, I'm gonna get in, I'm gonna get in right away and just put a starter in. But as price is confirming, I will accelerate into this trade and then understand I'm willing to hold on to this. So if we were looking for a full range expansion, we didn't get that on this particular day, but the market traded back up through the lower highs of the London session. Wherever you, uh, so we have a over 50 pip move here, but wherever you're getting in and if you're holding on for more, I don't, I, I would be closing this trade out anywhere above this level once it gets into that upper level of the London session. The longer the trade goes, if it didn't explode and go parabolic right away, I would just be moving my uh, position up to that 50 level somewhere watching how price behaves or putting it in and moving moving a trailer you know at some point maybe after it's broken up here put my trailer up here everything's at break even and just leaving my profit target in and leave the house this is a trade that that doesn't explode and go straight up so what still still going to put my trailer in we shouldn't have any heat on this trade this is again a range expansion on the upside after the news they pull it back inside and you'll notice Okay, we can call these things all kinds of things, but it's the reversal now into the closing price of the day. What setup was this? Well, we have a failed breakout at the high of the week. High of the week, outside of our opening range. Right, failed breakout, where's the money? That's the setup. Once it goes outside of the range, if you're going to trade this again, there may have been other instruments that were way better setups, but I'm demonstrating what happens when we're outside of the range, when we go to our timing window, we're at the high or the low, and the market has been out of balance already. We have other time frame traders driving these moves. We come to Wednesday. Sorry, Thursday's Thursday is an inside day. Wednesday's close is is uh, back inside of the range. So we broke out on Tuesday. It was out of balance. We've pulled back inside. We're still outside of the opening range of the week. The closing price is outside of the opening range of the week. Okay, it's an inside day. The following day closes back inside of the range. Okay, do you see the difference? Our opening range had a closing price outside on Tuesday, Tuesday's close. Wednesday's close was outside of the range. So, so technically this market is still out of balance from our opening range on the inside day, but we did not trigger any other time frame traders into the market. That was a large range day. Now we have a consolidation day. Expansion, contraction, but also Thursday closes as a first green day. First green day and an inside day. First green day is a low of the day buying, low of the session, low of the day buying opportunity, if indeed it presents. Now the first thing that we have happen, remember understanding closing price. The market begins to auction back and forth. Now this is an example of where we'll zoom in here. There's a, a small gap right at the open. It doesn't matter. It auctions right back up to that level. Uh, the spreads widen, whatever. The closing price is still there. They, mark, they make an initial high low that continues to go higher in the Asian window. There's our opening range 
actually right there's our opening range for Asia that is our opening range for Asia breaks higher in the London session before reversing we now have a range expansion on the upside a range expansion on the upside the market in the first hour of the US session pins down through the low of the day and we have a range expansion on the downside but we have higher highs and higher lows we had a higher low on our inside day we now have inside day traders in the market that means that this closing price level and this low of the day level and the low of our opening range from Monday's level where other time frame traders have now come into the market as buyers my thesis is a dump and pump possible opportunity heading into our New York Open. How does price behave at the time when we get there? Now I'll just point something out to Monday's opening range again. Uh, we have breakout traders in the market, one, two, three, even on the inside day. And then right before the U.S. window opens, we're back inside of the opening range from Monday. The blue line is the closing price from Friday. And you'll notice where we had our range expansion uh, in the London session pins up to that level. The market trades back down into closing price level, low of the opening range, pinning down first hour before pulling back. We had major red news at 8.30 New York time. Major red news. Higher high on the inside. Somebody uh, asked the other day, I, I don't understand higher high on the inside. So we're making lower lows, lower highs. The market begins to come back up, making higher lows and higher highs just prior to our U.S. window opening. The news wicks the bottom, wicks the top, and dumps back down into that level. So we're not making lower lows. Okay, The pin is the low. We've already cleared out the low of the session on other time frame traders on the longer time frame. We come into our second hour, and we have our little engulfment reversal. So again, an opportunity for traders who wanted to have a starter. But we have our New York Open that pushes back up into the high of our, our new box before auctioning down and engulfing and accelerating back up into the high of the day and into our closing price of the week. If traders entered in down low, it's a 35, 40 pip move. If they enter in after the New York Open, still targeting in the area of 20 to 25 pips, uh, but also understanding the importance of these levels that once the market starts to consolidate and give two-sided trading, to potentially be locking in the money. You've got a uh, good 30, 40 minutes up top, where if, you haven't ha if you've got a profit target or you're expecting a bigger move and it's consolidating and we have sort of lost that momentum now, we're in, nearing the end of the three-hour window, I'd just be taking the money and locking in that trade. We've gone through the Canadian dollar on uh, Wednesday, the short squeeze, but I want I want to show some simple stuff. Again, we talked about this uh, as a Monday trade. We had our low put in place and then we have out, we're outside the range. Other time frame traders are outside of these areas. Other time frame traders begin the reversal back up. We got an Asia session trade <clears throat> on higher level longs on day two. Before market pushes higher, there's our initial balance, higher highs before reversing. Other time frame traders now have come into the market, locking in the close of the day, establishing the high boundary. So when people ask, can you review peak formations again? I did a great video on that uh, a little while ago. It's in the playlist. Uh, everything you need is in this playlist, explaining that the peak formations are made in the sessions and they form the boundaries, the high and low boundaries. That is the peak formation. Now, when we have a boundary that's formed inside, as we see on day two, okay, that forms our boundary. That's a peak formation. Other time frame traders were behind the move on day one. Look at, so we have a, a one hour, two hour, a down candle, three hour, four hour, five hours up. We have four hour traders in the market. Daily levels have been broken. Hourly traders. This is being driven by other time frame traders. So when the mar market dumps down, which is why I talk about this, and I've done videos on this, talk about this in the playbook, measuring down on day two, 
on the dump back into profitable traders and drawing your opening range and initial balance. But on day two, that's our opening range and initial balance. Okay, we had other time frames trapped down low. Other time frames trapped down low. We have a reversal on top of that range. Remember when we first started the day, we had a peak formation, high peak formation, low on Monday. That potentially now could be a level the market may respect. There's our opening range and initial balance on Wednesday that broke outside of the range. So it went out of balance. We talked about that on the short squeeze. We'll look at that again real quickly. So the market has gone out of balance and traded into our opening range breakout on Monday and reversed on the short squeeze. That was a news catalyst, uh, the Bank of Canada, as well as uh, U.S. Major Red News, and the measured move continuation that took this market outside of the high of the week. Remember, our opening range and initial balance form our, our high low for the week. Market broke out of that. One of those extremes may tend to hold now as a boundary for the week. Tuesday got broken. They went up, and that market pushed through the high of day, high of week level. Didn't quite go up through the previous week. And why potentially could that have been? because we have other time frame traders up top who are stepping in when the market reaches those levels and we see selling above those levels. The market breaks down in Asia and London. Okay, so remember, I'm coming to the screen in New York. Now, this is not a, a candidate for a best trade setup. On Thursday for the Canadian dollar, we have a market that's just falling back. It's fading inside. This is not a blow off like we saw in the Japanese yen. But it closes as a first red day. First red day is a signal day. Page 58. And we just we saw talked about the inside day. Uh, we'll look at a, we saw first green day as well in the end. We'll look at an example of that as well on uh, US 30. This market fails to hold in breakouts. Comes back inside of not only our initial balance, our initial high and low of the week, but our opening range, the closing price, is back inside of the opening range. Now, we'll look at two things here. Number one, we had a closing price outside of the range. And the closing price of Monday. So we had the closing price of the week down low in a market that was in breakout. So uh, this market was out of balance at the, at the open of the week. That's the closing price that it respected um, on Monday. It auctioned back above there, and we had a market that closed out of balance, so we had a higher closing price on, on day two, sorry, on Monday. And then we had the market that closed out of balance. It pulled back inside. It is now back inside of the opening range. It is below the level that Friday broke out of to begin with, Thursday's low of day. The closing price is below that as well, and it's a first red day. So. One trader asked, uh, a few traders asked, I, I don't know how you could trade that. It's not at the high of the day. There are three levels on the chart. I made a really great video on that as well about the levels. There are three levels. Everything else is, is your mind chasing candles if you're looking at bars. I need a reason to get into the market and it needs to be at a level. So if the market goes outside of the range, well, we're reestablishing re the levels in, in a market that's out of balance. But when we're inside... We have breakout traders in the market now, not only at the high of the week, okay, but we have them on the high of the new day on Thursday, breaking Wednesday's high, breakout traders in the market. Where is the money? The money's down low underneath the daily lows. Okay, there are, so when we come to the screen, we have a level, we have levels already here from our opening range. That is our high and low. The market pushed a little higher, that was our initial balance. The market broke out of that box. That's a box, a big box. It breaks out of the box, drops down. So if you're chasing this inside, be prepared for this. Be prepared for this. This is not a well-engineered chart. This is a market designed to chop you up. You're either trading up top, outside of the range, or you have a specific setup coiling for a blow-off, whether that be Asia, London, or New York. So when you are inside... Okay, the market dropped down and formed a, a smaller box in Asia. There's our opening range. Broke down and broke down again in our U.S. window, opening range initial balance. Okay, so if somebody took this on a news catalyst or something else, immediately we saw that pin back up in the New York open. 
this market moved later in the day. When it moves later in the day, who's driving that move? Other time frame traders. Look at that candle that closes out the day. Who's driving that move? Other time frame traders. First red day. So now we have an opportunity if it sets up for a sell high of day, high of session, shorting opportunity if indeed that presents. The market immediately trades up into that level. Remember the auction process back and forth around closing price. It auctions and goes lower in our Asian session. Opening range, Europe pins up to the high. We showed this on the uh, smaller time frame. I'll, I'll zoom in in a moment. London open, parabolic through the low of the week into our US window. But even simpler is drawing the levels, our opening range. We went lower, we have our, our initial opening range that taps the low of the day, triggering other time frames potentially coming to the market. It makes a lower low. There's our opening range. That's our box. It's a sell high opportunity right off the bat in first hour. And adding into that at closing price as London opens. So we have our engulfment, the consolidation at closing price. Once you start to understand this, you don't need the EMA. You can put them on there, but it's a trend trade on day two. Back to the low of the week. That's all it is. We got other time frame traders driving this move. If you understand the other time frame traders, the rest will become very, very easy. And then also understanding when to stay out of the market. So we have our engulfment. And, and you want simplicity's sake. This was the highest point of the 20 period moving average pulling back. If you're, um, <clears throat> you know, looking for that confirmation, that's the lowest area, uh, sorry, the highest area on the pullback on a, on a market that, that is trending now. The thesis is this is a trending market for the blow off on day two. Uh, peak formation high on, on Thursday. That uh, begins our day count if you want to have a three day setup. But just in simplicity terms, it's first red day. And we have a shorting opportunity in London. Now, we go outside of the range. We go outside of the range. The low of the week, we'll back this up just for a moment. We have the low of Thursday, uh, sorry, Wednesday. And we have the low of the week. And we have the closing price of Friday down there. So, thesis is, uh, this is where traders in the US window will say to me is, but Canadian dollar was the first red day. Yes, it was, and it's blown off through the low of the week. That trade's over now. It's also the closing range of the week. So if we come back to a simple understanding that uh, we could have a market that uh, opens, trades higher, trades lower, and then closes, it's still gonna pull back at some point. Uh, if if indeed price behaves that way, it doesn't have to, because it could close right at the low of the, low of the week, but we are expecting some sort of pullback and at a minimum maybe into breakout traders from our opening range breakout from the london window uh, 9 30 new york open what happens we have a market that engulfs at that level for an easy reversal opportunity back into breakout traders again uh, traders may have taken this and that consolidation maybe not taking the money and this is this may have shaken them out so it's pulled back or they've had a trailing stop. So tra traders have asked me several times, um, how do you use a trailing stop? I don't use a trailing stop. I, I will either take the money. So as this, if this market's blowing off, I'm not expecting a, a, look, we had a first red day. I have a five minute coil down low. That's it. I have a five minute coil. This is the pullback into the closing range of the week. And I also expect that they could do this on a Friday to get both sides to make sure the London trader gets shaken out or gets stopped out and, and the trader who gets in at the beginning of the New York session gets a little bit, they go up and get lower level shorts before coming back and clearing out traders from the breakout of that opening range on the New York session. Again, just emphasizing uh, this, this may not have been the best, the best candidate. That there were several opportunities in the US window yesterday, oil uh, indexes, but pointing out that when the market goes out of balance at the timing window, so I'm just, look, New York, there's plenty of trades in the New York session. Uh, and this is just, this is a 90-10 right here, 90-10. What that means is that uh, I, even, even if you 
don't execute it well. If you're long, you can't really mess this trade up. So we have one push, two pushes, and we get our little inside pin hammer. If you're going to use a trailing stop, this is where I would use the trailing stop. I'd be, I'd be moving this, if I can, once that candle closes, 250 or above to lock in the 25. There shouldn't be any consolidation. If this was going to go through, it would go bang straight up to closing price. So just a reversal, closing price back into the close of the week. And I think for the other markets to continue this, I'm going to continue it in a separate video. Otherwise, this video will be way too long. I will walk through gold, oil, and indexes uh, because indexes are going to be different. And I'm going to do a separate video to explain indexes, especially when markets are trading out of balance. Uh, but gold, uh, we will do a separate video on gold. And I'm going to put this in a separate playlist, understanding other time frame traders. So hopefully that gets things started. A lot to reinforce, but all of the signal days, once you understand how other time frame traders work, all of these other signal days and trade setups will make sense because you're going to see the dump and pump opportunities. You're going to see the pump and dump opportunities whether it's outside of the range, whether it's at the high of the week, whether it's in a market that's broken outside of these levels. Uh, but my approach is to find these parabolic opportunities, 90-10 setups, not to try and guess. So I know there's some traders out there who have been banging their head, but hopefully this video clears things up because the signal days are concrete if you understand the other time frame traders driving these moves. Go back to the playbook. Take a look at the charts. Understand if you have a market in breakout. This is from the playbook. Breakout traders in the market. When other time frame traders may be entering into the market and how to recognize the overall templates for the week or just a signal day for one great parabolic opportunity in the session that you're trading. As I've mentioned, if you get one or two of these opportunities uh, in a week, they're significant enough uh, to compound your account very quickly. So hopefully this helps. Uh, we'll continue this. I'm going to break this into smaller videos and do individual instruments in each video uh, just to make it simpler to digest. But go over your, your charts, understand the larger picture with these levels and other time frame traders. Opening range, initial balance, day one, day two, day three, a reset. Mid midpoint range of the week on Wednesday, resetting to day one. Day one, day two, day three, into the closing range of the week. We will continue this in the next video, traders. Have a great day and may the markets go with you.